Hey, Planeswalker Smithers here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. First off, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. My gosh, it has been a year, and I'm hoping and blessing you with some cheer. So with that said, Planeswalkers, we got an awesome top deck today. A Platinum Demythic 6-plus win deck fitting for the day. So hang on tight. We're going to get there. We're going to cover the main board. We'll talk about the sideboard. We'll pull those both together into a best of three how-to and a guide for you, and then we'll go play some Mythic Magic in both best of one and best of three today. Now, quickly, before we get started, huge thank you. I always, always appreciate your support. I'm very humbled, and additionally, I just want to say from my family to your family, please have a happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Now, before we go check out the deck, I just want to say, uh, again, really, really appreciate the support. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there. Additionally, like the video if you like it. You can like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Twitch, stay up to date on daily content like this. Additionally, other ways to support the channel down below in the description. Appreciate the patrons, appreciate the memberships, appreciate the likes, the views, all that stuff, you guys. I really, really do. Um, I also share my untapped profile with you so you guys can track my journey. And I have the companion app down there available for you as well so you guys can share yours with me. I love seeing that. So, Planeswalkers, with that said, what Christmas deck are we playing today? You might know, it might be fitting. We have a Naya deck, that is right, and we are running a Naya control deck, so I'm very excited about this. I think it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, I definitely, definitely was looking forward to running this for you today and have been saving it because it's got a lot of interesting uh, components to it. Uh, again, being a control for one, but also being a Naya for another because... Naya is a great thing to be running in the meta right now, so we're going to have some fun with it. Um, now, with that said, as always, this deck list is available for you down below, Planeswalkers. If you do got questions or comments, let me know. Um, I do have a Discord channel down there as well, so you guys can absolutely hop in. Love seeing you guys uh, uh, shooting the talk with me uh, and each other. It makes my day. And additionally here... Um, the deck list and links are down below. So with that said, when we get to the nomenclature here, we got Naya control. So Naya is the red, the green, and the white color schema on the on the magic pinwheel here. Um, so the mountain, the forest, and the plains uh, to give us good old Naya. Now, additionally here, this deck is a control deck because it's all about managing the early game, managing the mid-range game, and then locking in on the late game. So most of the creatures in our win cons are late game, uh, mid-range to late game. So that is what this is about. That is the whole uh, portion and premise of this deck. So I'm very, very happy about it and looking forward to it uh, because we're going to be dropping treats on our friends today in Christmas fashion with control. So what we're going to do is we're going to go at a high level here, buzz through each of these cards, and then we'll come back and talk about it uh, holistically. And then additionally, while I am doing this, uh, as many of you also know, uh, there are timestamps down below, so you guys can check those out and skip to the portion of the video that you would like to see uh, happen. So what we got going on here, and technically it should actually be probably Naya Kahira Control because we are running this bad boy here. Kahira, now uh, the Orph Orphan Guard. Um, so this is a companion. This is a legendary creature, Cat Beast. Who doesn't love cats for uh, Christmas, right? Come on. Um, anyway, this should be, this thing looks like a reindeer either way. Um, but with that said, it does have Vigilance. Um, and as our companion, each creature card in our starting deck is a cat an elemental, a nightmare, a dinosaur, or a beast card. And then additionally, each other creature we control that is a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast card gets a plus one, plus one, uh, and has vigilance until this guy removes is removed from the board. Um, so that is what we got going on as our companion. Then we got good old Spikefield Hazard here. This is a lovely mortal land. Um, it's an instant speed spell that deals one damage to any target if that permanent uh, was dealt damage this way uh, and would die exile instead. So great against things like Croxa, great 
against the good old band Euro. Obviously not in Saturday anymore, now, but just some fun there. Uh, and additionally, a lot of people forget you can hit them to the face with this. So don't be afraid to get that uh, one extra damage if you need it. Um, this can help you there. And then additionally, as the modal land, uh, it can come in tapped as a mountain mana source. Now um, we got revitalized, so we get some life gain here with the three life. We can also draw a card for a nice cantrip at instant speed. We got Scorching Dragonfire. Um, so this card deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that creature or planeswalker would die, it's turn exile instead. You could also substitute this card uh, for the one that allows you to kind of shuffle out cards, or you can put one back in your library, draw a card as well. That one's very nice. I prefer uh, Exile, but that's something to think about as I also like to look at cards, um, but something to consider. Then we got Tangled Florahedron here. We can have it enter as a 1-1 uh, creature elemental, and then we can make it a mana dork, or essentially it is a mana dork, and we can tap for one land. Or it's also a modal land where it can come and tap and give us that lovely forest. Now uh, we got one of my favorite cards from M21. Now uh, we have Maze Mind Tomb. We can tap it, uh, put a page counter uh, on Maze Mind Tomb, scry one. We can tap it and pay two, and then also draw a card, but then also put a Maze Mind Tomb on it. Um, and then when there are four or more, we'll exile this card to gain four life, uh, and that's what's gonna happen. Then we get Shatter Skull Smashing, so a very, very powerful Boda land again. Uh, this is one of those pain lands, I like to say. It's not really pain land, but uh, you guys get where I'm going. Uh, when it enters, we can pay three life, uh, have it enter uh, untapped, and then otherwise we can have it enter the battlefield tapped, and then it's going to deal X damage at sorcery speed as we divide among two uh, that we choose, either a creature or a planeswalker, both planeswalkers, both creatures, etc. Um, if X is six or more, uh, it's going to deal twice X damage divided as we choose among them instead. Um, then we got Balagad Recovery. So this is another modal land where we can return target card from our graveyard to our hand or have it enter uh, as a uh, mana source of a forest. Then we get Cultivate, so lovely, lovely ramp. I love this card, it's awesome. You guys saw, saw me run this yesterday for the Christmas Eve uh, Sultai uh, Emergent Ultimatum, which was the Grinch that essentially, we didn't get to give out the gifts that we wanted. The Grinch stole it from us, but that's how it goes. Um, so looking forward to today's deck and seeing what we got going on here. But again, this card is about the ramp. We get to search our library for up to two basic land cards, reveal those cards, and put one onto the battlefield tapped, and the other into our hand, and then shuffle our library. Now, again, huge control here. We got Shadow of the Sky. Each player who controls a creature card with power four or greater draws a card, then destroys all creatures. Now, one that's also really nice in this is the Giants. Um, you could also run a kind of giant tribal within this in terms of the Naya. I've seen that done as well. Um, and I'm saying this because you could run the 7-7 seven, seven Vigilant Giant that also kills everything uh, for, for seven in, in all creatures, by the way. Um, not permanents. Then we got Yasharn. So Yasharn, Implacable Earth. So this creature is amazing in uh, Historic. You guys have seen him in the Fort Colored Sultai here today, though, for Standard. We're playing this guy because he's a nice 4 for body. He's got deck thinning abilities where we can go grab a forest and a plains when he enters, um, put those cards in our hand, and then players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents uh, to cast spells or abilities as well. Then we got Elspeth Conquers Death. So this is an amazing saga. Uh, it's an enchantment. We get three things here. We get to exile target permanent opponent controls with converted mana cost three or greater. Uh, Non-creature spells our opponent's control cost two or uh, two more to cast until our next turn. Last but not least, we can return target creature or planeswalker card uh, from our graveyard to the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, uh, or a loyalty counter. And yes, you gotta be careful because you can add a plus one, plus one counter uh, to your planeswalker. Um, then we got the good old Elder Gargaroth. So this thing is awesome. Uh, it's got Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. Obviously, anything that's got a ton of herbage. Uh, like QB or Questing Beast is going to do something. Uh, but this, when this thing attacks or blocks, we can choose one. We can create a 3-3 three, three Beast uh, Creature Token. We can gain 3 life or draw a card. Uh, rather fitting, but not our 
last but not least top end kind of creature. Uh, we got a good old Yadaro here, also known as Godzilla, given the uh, lovely art that we got going on here. Um, but this is a dinosaur turtle, um, so fitting for Kahira here. Um, we can cycle it for two, but it does have trample and haste, so lovely, lovely finisher here. Uh, when we cycle Yadaro Wandering Monster, we can shuffle it uh, into our library from our graveyard. If we've cycled a card uh, four more times this game, this card four more times this game, put it on the battlefield uh, from our graveyard instead. So very, very powerful. We've, I've, I've been able to get this off before. Hopefully we can do it today. Um, a big, big fan of this guy. Um, then we got the good old Turn Timber uh, Modal Land. It's Serpentine Wood and Symbiosis. Uh, as a land again, it's that pain land, it can enter tapped, or we can pay three to have it come untapped, or we can cast it for a sorcery spell here, look at the top seven cards of our library, we may put a creature card from among them on the battlefield, if that card has converted mana cost three or less, it enters with three additional plus one plus one counters on it, uh, and then put the rest uh, onto the bottom of our library in a random order. Then last but not least, we got another modal land here, we got Undo, Sky Runes and Inversion. So this thing can enter tapped, or we can destroy all non-land permanents. Super, super powerful. We get here. I'm going to love it because we better not have anything else on the board. <laughs> and our opponents better be stacked, and we're going to cover it. Um, so very, very excited about this. Um, great, great card. I really, really do enjoy that one. And then, obviously... Uh, our land makeup. We got a few different things going on between modals and scribes. Uh, the lovely Crawling Baron is one of my favorites. Uh, and then we obviously got Castle Ardenvale here. So this makes up our Naya control deck today. Again, this is a Platinum to Mythic 6 plus wins deck. Very, very pumped about it. Very fitting. Again, we got the red, we got the green, and we got the whites. Naya going on here today for Christmas. All right. So that is the main board. Let's go ahead and talk about the sideboard here, my friends. Uh, first off, we got Glass Casket. This is an artifact. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, we get an exile target creature opponent controls, convert mana cost three or less until it leaves. Um, you're going to want to play this against aggro decks. Uh, you're going to want to play it against creature aggro decks. Uh, you could play it against creature mid range based decks as well. Um, it's going to run around well against my red, rural aggro, uh, Boros Knights, Boros Warriors, Mardu Knights. Um, it's going to work also against good old rogues, uh, also the mill decks, uh, so lots of places for that one. Then we got Cinderclasm. So this card's pretty interesting. I'm actually surprised we don't see it more. Um, it's got a nice little kicker there, but uh, for its regular cost, it deals one damage to each creature. If it was kicked, it deals two damage to each creature instead, so at three at instant speed. Uh, we do have a nice little board sweep here. Um, so not bad it's pretty interesting and where are we going to run this so great against adventure decks great against and that's screw aggro it will work uh will also work against uh just any aggro deck mono red is going to be nice uh, it's going to be nice against the rogue stacks as well um so lots of places that are running kind of the thin guys also mono white uh life game decks those things this can, this can work for you too then we got valakut exploration so here this enchantment uh is three it's got a landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield in our control we get to exile the top card uh, of our library uh, you may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled at the beginning of your end step if there are uh, cards exiled with this card uh, put them into their owner's graveyard and then this card deals that much damage to each opponent so where do i like this you do start to go through a lot of cards which can be nice and can also hurt you do not play it against mill, it's gonna hurt you, but you can play it against mid-range to late game. This is a really, really nice little pinger. Additionally, the ability to look at more cards, play more cards, uh, is gonna be really, really helpful. Do not play it against aggro. So I'd play this against things, uh, again, like Selesnia mid-range, Sultai mid-range, Rakdos mid-range, and then all the Yorian decks, Yorian whatever, uh, but technically it should be Esper Yorian Doom, or I should say Doom decks, uh, those kinds of things too. Uh, then we got Thrashing Brontodon here. So this guy's got Sacrifice uh, for one. It's a nice 3-4 body, but it can destroy turret artifact or enchantment. This guy works well against Mono Red. Uh, it hits Annex, hits the Cleave. Uh, same with Gruul. Uh, hits hits Great Henge, hits the Cleave. 
Um, it's also going to work great against late game stuff. Uh, any of the Doom decks, anything running enchantments. Uh, a very, very popular card right now as well uh, in terms of those sideboards. Then we got Questing Beast. So here's one of those cards, like I said, that does a lot of stuff just because it's got a lot of verbiage. Um, so it's a legendary cre creature beast. Uh, it's got Vigilance, Death Touch, and Haste. Uh, it can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Combat damage that would be dealt by creatures we control this turn can't be prevented. And then whenever this creature deals combat damage to opponent, deals that much uh, to target Planeswalker that player controls. I actually like this in the early games. I like it in the mid-range, and I do like it against the late game. Um, we're, we move a little bit out of control when we move this in, out of control. Out of control archetype when we move this in. Um, but I do like this card quite a bit. Uh, big fan of QB. Uh, and I, I, you know, I think it's good in the aggro matchup. It's good in the mid range, uh, great against late game. Um, so, so really not like a bad spot for it. It's just really going to depend on your play style and who you're playing against and how you want to board. Um, it is a nice thing to hold up, though primarily against aggro. So those are going to be like the mono red decks, uh, gruel aggro decks, uh, great against. Uh, rogues decks as well, um, and a lot of other spots. So nice, nice uh, QB as always. So glad to see it in the sideboard. And then last but not least, we've played this guy before in the Simic Kicker deck. Um, I like seeing it again. Uh, so we got Craig Plate Balath here. Um, this guy's got Hexproof and Haste. To get this on the board, it's gonna be really hard to remove. Um, it's got Kicker for three. The spell can't be countered. Uh, if Craig played Balath was kicked, it enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. So this is like a more expensive uh, Triceratops. I think you guys remember that one. Um, so runs great against counter spell decks. Uh, so absolutely want to play it against blue. Runs great against light game decks. Um, you're not going to run against aggro. You could consider it against mid range. Um, so these are really like the the Yorian decks, the Doom decks, Esper, Orzov, you name it, Mardu, whatever you have it. Um, this guy is going to be a good one, uh, absolutely to play. So with that said, Planeswalkers, that is a cyborg. We're going to talk about how we pull these two together for a guide for our best of three how tos now, and I'll talk about in terms of aggro, mid range, and late game for you. Uh, so first off, against aggro, we're going to play. Uh, Glass Casket, maybe a Cinderclasm, and leave it at that. You could potentially go uh, Questing Beast. So we'll say six. Um, what I would kind of move around here, to be honest, um, is... Uh, so I like this. This all hits aggro. I like the Revitalize. Uh, life gain is going to be good. Uh, we are running a healthy 17 lands while well, everything is modal, so that's even better. So prevent flooding. Uh, which is great, so keep that in mind. Um, what I would look to remove, I would actually move out Elspeth Conqueror's Death because it's not necessarily going to hit a lot. If it does, you can keep it. Uh, Yasharn's not a bad one to move out either, so that gives us six right there. Um, other considerations that you can make, I like all these uh, here in the one and two drop. Uh, the other thing you could consider moving out is if you do want to run uh, Yadaro as your top end, uh, you could take a look at Elder Gargaroth as well. And again, this is just shifting up the curve uh, to making a more one-for-one -one trade, unless you really want to focus around Shire this guy. Um, so those are some good ones for you. That's how I would approach kind of the aggro deck. Now when we talk about the mid-range, we got things like Selesnya, Saltai, like I mentioned. We also have just creature-heavy decks, and then the good old Croxa uh, or Rakdos mid-range. Um, things that you could consider there. Glass Casket, if it is if it is a creature deck. Uh, if not, you're probably gonna skip that. You'll skip Cinderclasm. A Valakut Explosion could be, a, could be a thing. Questing Beast could also be a thing. And Craig Plate Balath could be a thing. Um, so again, I think it's gonna be a little less here. You're probably gonna run like four, uh, maybe four to six. Uh, again, where would I look? So in this one, I'd look at a little bit differently. Um, if you can't hit creatures, you can pull out Scorching Dragonfire. 
Um, that would be the first spot. You might not need the life gain as much. The cantrip's nice. Uh, so that could be a second spot that gives you seven. You may want to keep Elspeth Conqueror's Death. If they aren't running creatures, this could be a good one to remove. But I think you're going to want to keep some of the deck thinning and some of the ramp here to get to that, that later game faster. Uh, and that's how I'd play the mid-range matchup. Then when we talk about the last matchup here, this is late game. These are like the Yorian decks. <laughs> Again, Esper Yorian, Orzov Yorian, Mardu Yorian, those kinds of things. Um, and that's kind of how I look at it. Or other control decks like Grixis and whatnot. Um, this guy's going to be good. This guy's going to be good. Uh, Thrashy Bronte Don is going to be good. Valka Explosion. Um, so let's see here. That's a good seven, eight cards. Um, what you could do here again is um, you're not going to need Scorching Dragonfire. You could drop your Vitalize again unless you like the Cantrip. I do like Maze Mind Tomb. Gives you a little bit more value over time. Uh, Elspeth Conquers Death you could keep uh, because you're probably going to be hitting you, you know, uh, Doom, Doom Foretold, those kinds of things. If you want to get more aggressive, that's something you could drop as well. I don't necessarily recommend that. Uh, but what you will take a look at, and this is also what I actually missed in the mid-range one, is Shadow of the Sky. So if they're not running a lot of creatures, that's another good one. So between that, Scorching and Revitalize, that's a healthy 11 cards that you can move out. So Planeswalkers, that's where I would look to consider um, and how I would play the aggro mid-range and late game matchup for you. Uh, very, very looking forward to this deck. I think we're going to have a great time here for our Christmas episode. Um, so with that said, Planeswalkers, questions, comments, let me know down below. Again, deck list down below for you. Uh, links down below and Discord channel available for you if you guys want to come hang out as well. Always appreciate that. Um, with that said, we're going to go play some competitive magic. Very, very excited about this one today uh, and have been looking forward to our Christmas episode uh, and the Happy Holidays episode. There's the Salt Day Emergent one we did for the Christmas Eve Happy Holidays episode. Uh, and we're going to take a gamble, nope, uh, and jump into it here today. There's their standard rank. There's my mono white deck. As always, you guys can check that one out. Uh, but there's the Salt Day Emergent one we did yesterday. And we are playing a Naya control deck today all right so let's jump into our ranked session here uh, at mythic and then as always planeswalkers before we talk about cool as o2 here huge thank you i really really appreciate your support please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there additionally like the video if you like it you can like me on facebook and follow me on twitter and twitch stay up to date on daily content like this additionally uh, other ways to support the channel down below. Big shout out to patrons and uh, YouTube members as always. So this is super risky for the start. We did not get a good uh, life matchup or uh, mana matchup, so we're actually going to mulligan. Um, this one is a little bit better. We'll keep this. I'm going to drop the Gargaroth, and we're going to be really, really aggressive here. Um, and we're being really, really aggressive here because um, because I'm actually going to do this first uh, there we go let's go grab another green because we're playing best of one that is why so, we're playing, we got a Maze Mind here, which is kind of interesting. Uh, we'll keep that. And I'll play that. So, it could be a Salt Eye control type deck. Mid range. Could be a couple different things right now. And honestly, like below 95% Mythic, it can. Really, really very, to be honest. Might as well play that. Huh? Keep it. I'm gonna put them on the board just to see what they got going on here. 
We don't get we don't get too much value out of the hero, um, but I'm happy to do some chip damage here. I'm assuming they got direct kill. Yeah. So so they're a control deck. We're a control deck. We need we need Yudaros. We need a lot of Yudaros really fast. We'll be able to hit a couple things. Six. But not as much as we'd like to. We can hit uh, we can hit Ugans there with Ondu Inversion, which is nice. So we're gonna double up on Ashiok right now. <laughs> Fear your failure. My inspiration. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can play Undo Inversion next turn, which we're gonna have to. Grinch might be back. We can't pull any of that back either. At least we can wipe the board. <laughs> now we can always pull it back with Bell. Bell again, recovery. We got a lot of lands here. Now I don't got anything that I want to pull back with this yet. definitely come in. There's Uga. So that's when I wish that I would have pulled that. Before. In it. Oh boy, we're out of basics now. So as long as they have a counter here, they'll be in good shape. And they should, because it is a control deck. Not Yadaros just makes makes my heart hurt right now. So they're mostly kill spells, so we're just gonna play this guy. They got a lot of advantage with that if we could hit our own base mine. That's fine.
Hopefully they don't have any kill spells right now. If we can attack and get some card draw and some blocks, and some draw there, we'll be looking pretty good. Ah, big bummer. Good news is we've got most most of our lands are like toast. So hopefully every time we're going to draw something here. Here we go, let's get Sean. We have nothing we can pick up though. We've already killed every land in this deck. Look at this. We got two Yadaros. Far away so far. Alright. So nice, so nice. Love Maze Mind. We're at a heavy, heavy, heavy card disadvantage right now. They should be drawing them. They should be drawing them. some lands. Oh. I lied. Oh. Such pain. Look at that. Oh, where's Yudaros? Oh. And we, we don't have anything going on down here yet. That's why Crawling Barons is awesome. Why castles are awesome. We are not hitting anything. This guy should literally keep drawing, man. I don't know why. I don't know why they're not doing that. Here comes a kill spell? I don't know. They can bring their crawling barons in, though. They could be pumping their crawling barons, too. There they go. That thing is what's going to get me. Close to lethal. Very, very close. game. We'll give it to him. We're going to be nice because it's Christmas. I'm not going to make him play it out. So being a nice guy. Alright. 92%. Ugh. So painful. Let's keep going though. Really, really like this deck. It's pretty fun. Not bad if you guys didn't see. <laughs> so let's go ahead into the next one. We actually, oddly enough, even though it shows like we had no lands, now uh, we had plenty of lands there. So it's like between this deck and yesterday's deck, I've been slightly uh, surprised in terms of some land stuff, even for best of one. It's like, geez. Um, but with that said, we get to decide if we want to play this. Um, I got a few things here. I'm going to keep it. We don't have the double white, which is fine. <gasps> do we have, what do we have here? Ah, uh, we got a Lurus deck. So we're playing the cycle deck here. Um, that first. So 
we got a cycle deck. I could have kept that, but... That, you know, what's going to hit the 3-1. That's the only one that we could hit. Um, not going to be a good matchup for us, to be honest. source to run Shatter the Sky. Alright. Do we want the double? We got the double green there. We also have a green there. So we'll do this. We got seven. Take the seven. I'm gonna draw a card. I mean, they probably got what they need there, which is fine. Uh, we'll do another one of these. So right now, they probably have lethal, to be honest. All I need to do is cycle once. And that's game. There it is. Good game. Unfortunately, a really bad matchup for this deck. So going 0-2 on Christmas here. Bum, bum, bum. For our best of one. Super fun, though. Naya deck. Um, doing well in terms of losing, but <laughs> having a fun uh, time doing it. We did bring a control deck to an aggro uh, game. That's what happens in best of one. So let's go ahead and play some uh, traditional standard now. Again, there's that Saltai Emergent deck, as I jokingly said, the Grinch showed up. Uh, we, we try to make that work a lot, uh, but we did make it work, so at one point. Uh, so we're into our best of three match for the, for today. Planeswalkers, again, huge thank you. Uh, really, truly do uh, appreciate your support. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there. Additionally, like the video if you like it. You can like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Stay up to date on daily content like this. Additionally, other great ways to support the channel down below in the description, like becoming a patron or a YouTube member. Lots of great benefits for us to interact other ways uh, to have fun. I love queuing decks and looking at your deck list and those kinds of things. So um, uh, let's move on here to a final portion of our video in terms of the best of three. We will see how it goes. Not successful in best of one. We have not hit a Yadaro, surprisingly. I'm, I'm actually slightly surprised, but again, that is, that is how magic goes. So we are gonna play first, uh, even though we are a control deck. Um, I will keep this, and we will go from there. So we'll go Bella into Pillage. Pillage Verge. Oh, painful, so painful, so, so painful. Dorian deck. Probably Usper. Could be Dimmer. Control. Oh, 
Holy shit, this guys. They're killing me today. They are killing me today. This is going to be another tough matchup for us today. Um, oh. Let's do this first. Hey, there we go. Finally get our own. Not even in a hurry. Not the base mine. Honestly, you guys. Not at all. Not even going to look. have got to love three share of this guys and we haven't seen uh Yadaro. We'll move that over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh the Grinch. The Grinch is in the house right now. If I could hit that with Elspeth Conquer's death, I would. I need... Oh! open because I need the draw. Yeah, there's the direct kill. Let's say nice. Missing the white source. We could wipe them if we wanted to here. If we have anything in here, we could pull back a hero. Two draws. As painful as it is. I'm keeping these open still here. Thank you. 
four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll draw one end of our opponent's turn. <clears throat> So again, control deck, no white source for Doom. We got a lot of stuff we can flip out here. Could have drawn at the end of my step actually there, uh, or my opponents would have been a better one. Yeah, crawling barons is going to help though a bunch. Unless they're playing Hagra Mauling, they're not going to be able to do much. Uh, I'll drop that. I'll drop two of the Shatter Skies. This will make a world of difference. Really, really well. There we go. Now we can see what they're actually playing. Probably a lot of kill stuff, for sure. That's why crawling is going to help us. Also why, you know, Yudaro is open to it, but we'll bring in Craig Plate. Uh, because one, it can't be countered. Two, uh, we'll be able to lost up here. Oh, 
Let's see if we got anything left. One. All right. Could hit this enough with these. <laughs> oh, I could do that. Do I do that, or do I play Elspeth conquers death? Oh, that's that's. Uh, let's do Elspeth conquers death. Now, if they bring in a Ugin, Ugin will get rid of a few things here. We'll see, though. And we're close on Yudaro, so don't forget about Yudaro. We're at 27. We, we got four in there. We got a high, high chance. Getting. Frender's got a lot of cards. A lot of cards. Barons alone. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have enough for lethal here, so we'll see. They need a Hagra Mauling. Or uh, a couple other things. Let's bring this guy back. go we got it we got it with our naya control deck so now my friends we are going to move into the next phase of this match we're going to dump share this guy because we don't need that uh, we'll grab the quest and we'll grab crank plate um valakut was pretty fun that's a good matchup and thrashing's uh thrashing hits some of their stuff. We didn't see too much. Let's dump two other cards here. What do we not need? Um, I'm going to dump a Cultivate. Well, actually, I like the thinning. We don't need the Revitalizes. Um, and I think we should be good. I'm keeping the Scorching. Uh, I'm keeping those for their 2-2s. Two I'm going to keep the Spike Field for the 2-2s. Two um, and then I think we're good. I like this. So we'll see how it goes. All right, Jamin, it is. A 
let's make it rain here. Yeah. Boom. I will keep. Don't know why they said good game. Maybe they're quitting. I'll take it. <laughs> First match was pretty long. They used 10, we used 7. We got double Valakut. Crawling Barons is going to be Fletcher, hopefully, again. Oh, it would have been so nice to get double Valakut going. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so, what can we do here? I can play that guy. I'm gonna do this for some thinning.
Oh, they won't let you cycle, huh? Oh, that's brutal. Um, so we'll hit this guy. And we'll hit that guy. That could have been real nasty on that ping, by the way, too. Um, that would have been four damage. We're actually going to look here. We got here in the graveyard. We got plenty of stuff. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have enough to do both. So let's see what we pull first. If they pump their crawling barons, they'll actually win the match here. Four, seven, no, oh, they're one short, actually. One short. Whew. Crawling barons could do it. Spell again, we can pull some stuff back if we want. I still got, they need two though. That's part of the One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. We will make a play out. We'll keep this out. They went heavier on the control. They need to flip the Crawling Baron in. Um, I can't block Atris here. So that would be good for them. good game though. Very, very early good game. Not a fan of that. Uh, not how I play. That is fine. We'll keep this stuff. We'll keep what we got going on here. Uh, how many lands are we running? Again, 17, but we got 3, 5, so many modal lands. Uh, I'll keep it. We'll be on the play though. Instead of the draw. All right, nothing like a good control versus control matchup here. We will play first. I am totally fine with this. We'll hang on to that guy. If we can get a red source early, though, that will help. And we got the barons. That's gonna help. Let's look. There we go. We'll keep that. So now we want to save Maze Mind if we can. There we go. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. Um, 
Do I want to play this? I could. play the control game. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted. Go. Nine minutes. Let's win this, though. Control versus control. Blue, black versus red, white, and green. So they can't counter this now. I will haunt your dreams. Haste. 
costs two more to cast. They won't be able to have a direct kill spell because uh, Hover is going to cost six. So we'll be very, very close to lethal here. Oh, our field of ruin is going to ruin us. It will ruin us. Uh, we're bringing this guy back. Walkers, we crushed it for our best of three in a traditional Naya Christmas style control deck. Oh, so happy. Oh, so much, so much fun. All right. Very, very happy with those results today. Happened the way we thought. Best of one was going to be a struggle. Best of three worked out great. So great. And we played control versus control. And we had the whole magic pinwheel going on there. So let's go ahead and check out the deck again. Naya Control, super fun. Um, we got Yadaro on the board by a different form, so that was great. Um, again, Planeswalkers, here's the deck. Super, super loaded, super, super fun. Lots of great ways for us to play around our opponents. Um, good, good way to go. I would, I would definitely throw more Crawling Barons in there. I was a little worried again about the mana mix, but that's how I was yesterday, how I was today. It worked out fine. Grinch didn't steal Christmas today. We had a great Christmas. We we won the best of three. was very happy with that because um, this is primarily best of three deck for sure. So um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, this was a Platinum to Mythic 6 plus win deck. Very, very fitting for today in terms of good old uh naya colors for christmas here um so with that said planeswalkers again huge thank you i really do appreciate your support uh please please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there additionally like the video if you like it you can like me on facebook follow me on twitter and twitch uh to stay up to date on daily content like this additionally planeswalkers great ways to support the channel uh, down below, like becoming a patron or a YouTube member. I, I truly, truly appreciate that. I love interacting with you guys in other ways. And uh, the good old Discord channels down there as well. If you do have questions about the gameplay, questions about the deck, please let me know in the comments. Here to help, happy to help. And again, uh, truly, truly, uh, everyone have a happy, safe Christmas, happy holidays uh, from my family to yours. Um, love, love this time of the year, um, despite the circumstances, and stay strong, everyone. Uh, we'll get through it together. So with that said, as always, Planeswalkers, until next time, I'll see you again soon. Hope you guys enjoyed the Christmas edition. Uh, we made it work, was very happy with the results. Um, started off slow in best of one, but we crushed it in best of three. Had a lot of fun today. Uh, so you stay safe, you take care. We'll see you again soon. A lot more content coming your way. Tearless, all that fun jazz. So until next time, Planeswalkers, take care. <laughs>